the next talk. Now, uh, we're going to listen to, listen to Marko Mišić from Belgrade. Uh, we are very happy ho to host Marko. him today. Marko, please, welcome. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm honored to be part uh, uh, at, at this conference, uh, uh, Plagiarism Detection Conference in 2022. Uh, uh, my name is Marko Mišić, and I uh, am an assistant professor at the University of Belgrade, uh, School of Electrical Engineering, Department of Computer Engineering and Informatics. I come from uh, uh, Serbia, and today I will uh, give you more details on textual and source code plagiarism in academic environment. I will give a Serbian perspective uh, on the um, matter. Uh, at the beginning of my presentation, um, I will give uh, some uh, more details on my background uh, regarding uh, plagiarism and plagiarism detection. Um, I've been uh, in academia for almost uh, 15 years, and uh, for, from the very start, uh, when I started working as a teaching assistant, I started to teach uh, several freshman year massively enrolled courses. Those are mostly courses on programming, uh, algorithms and data structures, with typically from 200 to 700 uh, students, uh, which is a pretty large uh, number. So more or less, uh, as soon as I started working with students, with their homework and project assignments, with their thesis, I started tackling plagiarism detection problems. So I am into the matter for more than uh, 10 years. Uh, also, I uh, became interested in plagiarism detection scientifically. So my PhD uh, was also built around plagiarism detection. Uh, um, the title was Improving Source Code Plagiarism uh, uh, Detection because I, um, I come from the Technical University from Computer Engineering and Informatics Department, and we uh, deal a lot with the um, source uh, uh, code. Um, during my uh, work on PhD thesis, I developed um, uh, tools for plagiarism detection. We had also some um, uh, new things on methodology, and uh, uh, it resulted in numerous papers in journals and uh, conferences. Um, of course, uh, uh, in the minute, meantime, uh, I also took uh, some other responsibilities here at uh, our school, and for five, four years, I've been a member of, of our disciplinary committee. Uh, uh, from the uh, last year, I'm also the chairman of that committee, and that committee is in charge for cases of student ac academic dishonesty, and um, we perform uh, disciplinary hearings, hearings uh, uh, with typically uh, 30 to 50 cases uh, annually, which is not a small number, and it also uh, emphasizes uh, the problem with the plagi both plagiarism uh, and, in the wider sense, other uh, uh, breaches of academic uh, integrity. So uh, I will uh, give uh, more examples and uh, more information both uh, on textual and source code uh, uh, plagiarism, and I will start uh, with the, our motivation uh, to fight this uh, malpractice. Of course, academic integrity is very important for us, for academic community, both in the research, but also in our uh, teaching uh, uh, practices. Uh, the importance uh, of, of uh, that uh, academic integrity have a reason, it raised uh, in, in the recent uh, years. And uh, uh, general public was also interested uh, in the topic uh, because we had several notable cases of plagiarism among uh, highly positioned individuals uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, mostly those are politicians uh, uh, that uh, bear uh, honorable functions, uh, government functions and other uh, functions. And I mentioned some of them that sparked a lot of in interest. Uh, and we can say that uh, those were um, like plagiarism affairs uh, in Europe. Uh, uh, first to mention was the Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg, uh, who was the Minister of Defense of Germany, uh, who was accused of uh, plagiarism, plagiarism uh, his PhD thesis in 2011. 
and he was stripped off his uh, PhD thesis. Um, uh, it was took from, from, from him because of the dishonest practices. Then we have in uh, Central and Eastern Europe, in Hungary and Romania, we have, uh, we have uh, Paul Schmidt, former Hungarian president, uh, who was accused of plagiarizing his PhD thesis from the 80s. Uh, in 2012, uh, he had to resign after uh, he was uh, stripped down of his uh, PhD uh, thesis. The similar was with Viktor Ponta, Romanian uh, prime minister, uh, also with his PhD thesis, I think, in law uh, uh, during 2000. Um, uh, uh, 12. Also, we had uh, two allegations uh, against Ursula von der Leyen, who is now the president of the European Commission, as far uh, as we know. But once um, upon a time, she was a minister of defense of uh, Germany. Uh, she uh, hasn't been stripped off of her PhD thesis, although uh, there were strong allegations that were admitted by her university that uh, she had a large part of it plagiarized. Um, uh, the most um, uh, recent uh, event was the uh, was the example of uh, Luxembourg Prime Minister Xavier Bettel, uh, who was accused of plagiarism in his master thesis. Um, uh, he even himself partially uh, uh, um, confirmed that uh, he did some practices that he would not do uh, uh, once uh, uh, again, but uh, he was not stripped off of his, uh, um, uh, his uh, uh, title. Our country, Serbia, which is a small country in South uh, uh, Europe on the Balkan Peninsula, is not exception to that problem. And we have a pretty huge uh, affair uh, built around uh, our um, Minister of Finance, Sinisha Mali. He was once uh, upon a time in 2013, when all, uh, it all started, a mayor of Belgrade. Belgrade is the cap capital of Serbia, our biggest city with almost 2 million uh, people. Uh, and he was accused of plagiarism uh, uh, in his PhD thesis, which he, he did at the F School of Organizational um, uh, Sciences. Uh, uh, he did uh, uh, his research on some economic topics. And uh, several uh, scholars uh, did research on uh, uh, his uh, thesis, um, and they all ag agreed that he had almost 10% of text uh, plagiarized uh, and that he took some studies from uh, abroad as well. Um, the process is still ongoing. We had um, in, in year 2021, we had um, um, decision by the university uh, uh, ethical committee that he plagiarized um, his uh, um, uh, PhD and he was stripped off of the title. Uh, the title was took from him, uh, but still then he appealed to the higher courts and uh, the, the whole top, topic was transferred to the legal level, to the courts, and uh, uh, it's still not uh, uh, finished, so it's a pretty long fight here in Belgrade, in Serbia, uh, the pretty long fight of uh, academic community, uh, so not to have these uh, practices uh, in in, uh, in our uh, in our so society. Of course, a much wider problem uh, can be revealed at the student uh, uh, level because uh, there are a lot of students, of course, and they tend to plagiarize uh, their uh, homework assignments, their thesis, their projects, and similar. Of course, uh, uh, we can. Uh, give some context and motivation of the topic, topic and I will start uh, with the definition of plagiarism. Um, um, I took here, um, uh, I would like to present here two definitions, although there are many of them, there are, is, um, is not a one common uh, definition, but it, it can be defined in different ways uh, uh, concerning different uh, uh, fields of research. But we can say that plagiarism can be defined as presenting someone else ideas or work in whole or in part without proper author or source uh, attribution or crediting. Also, we can say that it's the, the act of illegally appropriating someone else's spiritual creations and presenting them as one's own. Um, however, it, that's a serious academic misconduct, a threat uh, and a branch, a breach of academic honesty, and we need somehow to fight this uh, mal uh, practice. Um, 
There are, for that reason, various acts, regulations, and codes of honor uh, are written to regulate uh, the matter, uh, both for the professors, for academicians, researchers, and students. And just to mention a few of them, uh, there are two examples uh, from the American University. At the Princeton University, they have a, a constitution of the honor system, which uh, um, in detail regulate, 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 regulates uh, uh, this uh, matter of uh, academic dishonesty, dishonesty and uh, especially plagiarism. Then at the Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology, you have uh, academic integrity handbook uh, uh, for students which they can uh, use as a guide as a tutorial so not uh, to breach uh, those uh, academic uh, contacts or um, uh, codes of uh, honor uh, at the University of Belgrade, Belgrade we have our uh, own regulations we have a rule book on this disciplinary responsibility of uh, students which we usually usually uh, use um, uh, to uh, um, proceed with those disciplinary uh, uh, hearings. Of course, uh, we can say that students are not uh, well informed about the plagiarism when they uh, enter um, higher education uh, institutions, both about the definition, allowed practices, and honor of codes or regulations. There are different views regarding uh, several practices that uh, form a kind of a borderline be between uh, those practices that are okay and those that are uh, not allowed. So uh, they ask uh, uh, about uh, allowed and unallowed collaboration pa patterns and teamwork in project projects because uh, they are uh, favored in some uh, contexts, uh, uh, they uh, ask or they they can have different views on the text, image, and source code reuse. And of course, uh, there are different stances on, on uh, auto plagiarism and the auto citations in the previous uh, speech and uh, other other. Um, speakers also mentioned today uh, uh, the problem of auto citation and auto uh, plagiarism. Uh, there are of course num numerous surveys uh, in the open literature uh, uh, that uh, uh, tackle the problem of plagiarism. Um, numerous reviews, uh, also uh, questionnaires are co conducted and most of them state that more than 30% of students admitted plagiarism once during their studies. You know, uh, they usually study from three to five uh, years uh, to obtain their bachelor or ma master uh, thesis. Uh, also more than 60% admitted that they have given their work to the others. And uh, finally, five to 10% of students regularly uh, plagiarize their uh, solutions, which is not a small percent, and uh, we need to fight uh, uh, that uh, um, malpractice and dishonest uh, practice. We also did some surveys uh, here at the University of Belgrade at the School of Electrical uh, uh, Engineering, and um, our studies uh, and surveys revealed that students have a generally softer stance uh, towards plagiarism. Uh, one uh, out of 10 students considers plagiarism tolerable uh, practice, which is uh, a pretty problematic stance, uh, especially if you ask uh, uh, their uh, teachers, their professors. Uh, more than 40% of students sent their work to the others. 80% of the students think that it is allowed to send the work to other party and that the sole responsibility is on the side that uses someone else's work, which is a really, really uh, problematic um, uh, stance. And 7%, which is in accordance with that uh, uh, number, numbers 5 to 10% in the open lit literature, uh, admits uh, that they admitted that they submitted uh, someone else's work as they are uh, uh, own. Of course, uh, students are aware that there are a lot of dishonest, uh, uh, dishonest uh, practices among uh, students. Just to name the few, uh, there are those pay paper meals or homework uh, uh, meals 
uh, which allows students to buy uh, uh, solutions to their exam, to purchase for papers, theses, projects, or, or uh, homework uh, um, uh, assignments. Then uh, some students try to pass their exams using electronic devices, such as cell phones, smartwatches, uh, miniature cameras or earplugs, even uh, those uh, uh, like uh, uh, pieces uh, of technology are, uh, are used in order to pass the exam. And we have also very, very severe practices uh, where someone tries to pass the exam instead of someone uh, else, uh, which also includes the forgery of student documents in order to uh, be correctly identified and uh, uh, similar. Um, uh, of, of course, textual and source code plagiarism represent uh, uh, the most frequent cases of uh, academic uh, misconduct. Uh, those are mostly thesis work, projects, or homework solutions, and various uh, re reports or seminary uh, uh, work. There, there is an obvious need to check submitted documents for uh, plagiarism, and for that reason, we'll uh, use a lot of um, uh, software uh, tools. Um, many of them are mentioned also today. Uh, I think the most uh, the most uh, used software pieces are Turnitin Authenticate and Antiplakia Tadvacek for textual plagiarism. And for source code, we have uh, JPLAG from Karlsruhe University and Moss from Stanford uh, University. Of course, in academia, you have uh, numerous tools. Uh, academic efforts uh, mostly done for research. Those, those are mostly non production system, uh, we, uh, systems which uh, uh, cannot be easily used or adapted um, uh, for the uh, massive enrollment uh, uh, um, uh, environments. Uh, so uh, we need uh, somehow to, to uh, check uh, uh, what tools are the best uh, for uh, those uh, purpose, uh, purposes. Of course, I would like to emphasize once again that plagiarism detection is uh, um, a process which consi consists of several phases and that document similarity is not necessarily document plagiarism. Um, uh, in the picture on your right side, you can see that uh, it's uh, usually defined as a, a four phases uh, process. Uh, this is the picture from Calvin and Lancaster from, from their paper in uh, 2001, when they first uh, emphasized that we need to collect the documents, uh, either textual or code documents, then we should perform a similarity detection with tools then we need to confirm that uh, uh, there are indeed similarities in the document, uh, in the documents uh, that are checked, and then we should proceed uh, with plagiarism uh, investigation to see what are the uh, causes, the reasons uh, um, uh, that, uh, for, for, for such uh, misbehavior. Uh, of course, there are positive and negative causes of similarity, uh, especially when we speak about the source code plagiarism. Uh, there are some practices like, uh, such as code reuse and, and um, uh, sim similar, which are allowed in software industry. So we have to be uh, pretty sure that uh, uh, the, uh, the code or parts of the text are deliberately taken uh, uh, in order to breach uh, academic um, uh, on, uh, honesty instead of uh, just developing uh, on, um, uh, on some code or uh, a text. So we need a thorough ma manual inspection of suspicious uh, cases, which uh, has to be done by the uh, manual, uh, manually by the instructor or lecturer uh, in, the, uh, in the course. Um, uh, now on, uh, I'm going to uh, talk uh, a bit more about textual plagiarism, plagiarism detection with an emphasis of a Serbian uh, 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 language. Of course, in text, there are numerous methods to hide plagiarism, uh, such as uh, lack of citations or um, improper citations, uh, then different kinds of paraphrasing, rewarding, uh, word reordering, or similar, the use of metaphors, and even foreign language translations, uh, which were mentioned also uh, uh, to, uh, uh, today. Um, and I will talk about it also in my uh, presentation. 
Uh, also, uh, we need a corpora for detection. Uh, we we have um, to have the corpus of documents for comparison. Um, many people argue that in text uh, plagiarism de detection, we need large repositories of the past work because uh, students, they, but also academicians, they usually took uh, parts of the text from the previous works. So we should rely both on our local repositories, institutional or uh, lecturers' own repositories or index databases and repositories uh, and other internet uh, documents. Then uh, uh, we have uh, some problems related to the language of documents as software tools are mostly adapted to English language. We had a chance to, to hear today that uh, anti-plagia Tadva Czech software is uh, pretty well adapted to also to other languages, but uh, some other tools are not. And as they do not take into account uh, linguistic features of other uh, languages, and that typically yields um, lower similarity scores for uh, other uh, other languages. Uh, Serbian language is not uh, not an exception uh, for that, and for that reason, uh, I would like just to emphasize uh, some uh, or several um, uh, linguistic uh, features of the Serbian uh, language, uh, which can be important in plagiarism uh, detection. First of all, I would like to say that Serbian language is a part um, uh, of the much broader language, uh, which was spoken in the former Yugoslavia, as you probably know, Serbia and uh, five other republics uh, were part of the common uh, country uh, up till uh, until uh, 90. Uh, 92. Uh, so Serbian language is one of the standardized uh, um, varieties of Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, common South Slavic language. It's, it was called Serbo-Croatian in former uh, Yugoslavia, and it is spoken in Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro. However, there are some specificities um, uh, uh, in those languages. Differences uh, are mostly in used scripts or alphabets, which is important. Then there are some di dialectic details, and of course there are differences in accentuation, but, but we perfectly understand uh, each uh, other. Uh, official script uh, that is used for writing in the Republic of Serbia is Cyrillic, uh, but a Latin script is also widely used, as Serbian is, I think, practically the only European standard language whose speaks, uh, speakers are fully functionally digraphic. Uh, here in Serbia, uh, but also uh, in, other in other countries, uh, we use both scripts uh, interchangeably, uh, and um, we also learn them in schools. Uh, so the standard recognizes the usage of both scripts, although the Cyrillic is um, the official one and uh, it is used by government, but um, in academia, even in schools, uh, in uh, especially in technical correspondence, uh, Latin is uh, uh, rather preferred. Also, we have newspapers both in, in both uh, uh, scripts, uh, which uh, uh, offer uh, 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 some possibilities for uh, uh, play, uh, plagiarism. Also, our language, language uh, orthography is built around the uh, pretty simple phonemic principle, one letter for one voice. But uh, due to uh, those voices uh, with the diacritic signs and the different orthography from English, there are unofficial orthographies in internet, uh, uh, internet documents, uh, uh, which are widely used uh, as a target for uh, plagiarism. So it can be also, uh, it should be also taken into consideration when we speak about plagiarism uh, detection. Um, uh, uh, regarding th those other languages, uh, uh, Bosnian also uses Cyrillic script. In Croatian, they use solely Latin script, but uh, they also, uh, most of them also uh, know uh, to, how to write in uh, uh, Cyrillic. Uh, but uh, that common variety of language uh, has also two standardized uh, word pronunciations and spellings. They are called Ekavian and Iekavian. Uh, the first dialect, first spelling 
uh, is widely used in Serbia, but also some Serbs from Bosnia and Croatia and Montenegro, they use the other one, the Ekavian standard. Uh, and the Ekavian standard is officially used in Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro. Uh, those differences are probably um, uh, well known to you because the differences are based on the utification of the old Slavic letter Yat. Uh, uh, in some words. So some words are different. We perfectly understand each other's, uh, but uh, it's a perfect opportunity for plagiarism because students, they um, have different uh, uh, ways uh, how to take some text, for example, in Croatian, then change the script, change the dialect, and they have a bit different, or do some paraphrasing, of course, and then they have uh, a pretty different text uh, in Serbia. Also, the students in Croatia can do the same if they know uh, how to uh, read and write Cyrillic, uh, um, uh, Cyrillic uh, letters. Uh, so the problem uh, can should be emphasized in that sense, and tools uh, should take this into consideration uh, because we need some uh, uh, canonical form to compare documents. And uh, in my opinion, that should be Latin because it is wi wi widely used. Uh, um, among all, all those speakers of uh, the common South Slavic uh, uh, language. Uh, so uh, to check documents in Serbian, both texts from uh, Cyrillic and Latin corpora should be considered. Uh, texts from Cyrillic should be reinterpreted, transliterated uh, in Latin. Uh, and uh, also those altern alternative Latin orthographies uh, should be considered in order to get uh, high enough similarity uh, 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 scores. Of course, uh, we have several efforts here in Serbia how to tackle uh, the problem of, uh, of plagiarism, especially in scientific uh, documents. So uh, we have several repositories of scientific documents written in Serbian that are open access. access. First of all, it's Serbian National Repository of PhD Thesis, uh, uh, which uh, was established in 2017 by the law on, high, law on high, higher edu education uh, here in Serbia. Then we have our university library, Svetozar Marković, uh, which also maintains uh, uh, one uh, repository list uh, and has uh, an early access tool to PhD thesis. Then uh, the biggest uh, private university here, um, uh, privately owned university, Singidunum University, um, also maintains uh, its own um, repository as well as the other uh, university. However, most institutions do not have open access to their uh, bachelor and master thesis repositories, nor they are um, available for uh, checking. Uh, most of them are concerned uh, because of plagiarism and academic uh, dishonesty, and for that reason, uh, those documents are not publicly uh, publicly uh, available. Uh, uh, if we speak about the cu current efforts uh, and status in plagiarism detection in textual documents, as I said, uh, archiving and checking for plagiarism is mandatory for PhD. Uh, a thesis, uh, uh, all PhD thesis should go through that uh, process, it should be um, uh, uh, reposited in the Nardus uh, system or archived in that Nardus system uh, together with their reports written by the uh, thesis uh, commission. Then uh, Turnitin Authenticate uh, tool is used for checking and uh, several times in the past those procedures, those procedures and regulations uh, regarding uh, archiving, checking, reporting were improved uh, in order to fight this uh, practice. However, there were uh, several problems, uh, some serious problems with financing of uh, um, plagiarism checking uh, in the uh, past. Uh, even uh, newspapers here uh, uh, reported on that uh, several uh, thesis defenses were delayed uh, because of the problem of the lack of credit for the, uh, uh, for the system because um, those checks are uh, not uh, uh, inexpensive. They are usually uh, pretty expensive. As they told me, it's uh, around 100 euros per document, per thesis, which is not uh, uh, a small amount of money uh, if, if you know that uh, 
uh, I think around uh, uh, several uh, thousands or around thousand uh, uh, PhDs uh, are defended uh, in Serbia uh, uh, annually. And of course, uh, uh, when they uh, ran out of credit, uh, then uh, they have some somehow to maintain the system and uh, uh, fill in with, with those credits, which is connected to problems with public procurements and lack of uh, funds of the ministry and planning of the uh, budget. Uh, so uh, we had uh, troubles regarding that. Uh, also, there are sporadic efforts at other schools, uh, most, most of those schools related to social sciences. Uh, for a long period of time, even before uh, those regulations uh, took uh, um, into force, uh, uh, the School of Economy had its, its uh, Ephorus uh, plagiarism checker. Um, it's because uh, they have a lot of those uh, uh, reports, seminary work and similar and uh, they have their own uh, more strict, uh, stricter uh, uh, regulations. Uh, so all student uh, um, documents are checked and uh, uh, they prescribed a low allowed similarity of 25% 20, for seminary work and uh, bachelor thesis, 10% uh, for master thesis and 5% for PhD. Uh, work. Also, the School of Political Sciences, they have also their own uh, regulations and uh, they also check for plagiarism in their uh, student um, uh, documents. So uh, that's the part about the uh, textual plagiarism. And now I will talk a bit more uh, on the part that I'm mostly concerned uh, with its source called uh, plagiarism detection, because uh, I come from the uh, School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Engineering and Informatics Department. So we uh, deal uh, with uh, uh, practices uh, regarding uh, source code uh, uh, similarities. And uh, of course, computing education is a pretty demanding activity. It involves uh, practical training. That uh, uh, practical training is pretty frequent and the students uh, have uh, they have a lot of programming assignments, uh, projects, laboratory work, uh, uh, which are important for gaining programming competencies, but which are also a frequent target for uh, plagiarism. And it is a significant problem both at the information technology schools, but also in uh, industry. Uh, to be consistent with the first part of presentation, we, we can say that source code plagiarism uh, is any intentional or unintentional uh, source code submission and reuse which fails to adequately ac acknowledge the other's work. It's uh, my favorable uh, favorite definition uh, given by Georgina Kozma and Mike Joy in, uh, Joy in their paper from 2008. Of course, in the context of academic environment, we speak about plagiarism detection because we need to compare uh, nu numerous small scale software solutions uh, up to several hundred or maybe thousand lines of source uh, code uh, with active attempt to hide uh, plagiarism. Uh, the problem is also known in industry, but as a software clone detection, uh, when you have uh, often two several, uh, several uh, often two uh, larger or several uh, larger software solutions, and uh, the problem is with the uh, patent rights, uh, copyright infringements, and generally intellectual property. So uh, the tools and approaches are a bit uh, different. I will I would like to uh, uh, talk here about the plagiarism detection in academic in environment, and I'm mostly concerned uh, with the. Uh, it. Of course, source code plagiarism uh, detection differs from textual plagiarism detection in several aspects. Uh, first of all, source code has a clear structure as programming languages are formal um, uh, languages and uh, uh, it's much easier to transform source code into some kind of abstract representation and then to compare that abstract uh, uh, representation. However, students uh, use uh, different uh, techniques, transformations and modifications to hide plagiarism in source code while keeping the original functionality of the program, which is of course uh, important. Uh, they can be split in two uh, broad categories. First, 
uh, are the ones that we uh, fight pretty uh, easy with the tools. Those are lexical changes like renaming of identifiers or constants, uh, addition or deletion of comments in, co in code, changes in formatting and uh, uh, output. But um, uh, more serious to uh, detect are structural, structural changes such as reordering of expressions, statements or code blocks, then loop transformations, addition of su superfluous code, uh, function inline, inlining or vice versa, changes in scoping and uh, similar. So uh, we need uh, uh, source code similarity detection systems or tools in order to pre-process uh, those codes and then uh, to compare uh, them. Uh, most of them are uh, based on tokenization and abstract uh, representation of the code, which are mentioned uh, before, and uh, usually structure-oriented comparison based on string matching is uh, used in those uh, systems. First of all, source codes are converted to a sequence uh, of uh, uh, tokens, which are ca carefully chosen to uh, represent the code, but also to hide uh, uh, some uh, uh, details on the style, uh, naming, and similar, then token sequences are compared using, using comparison uh, algorithms. Uh, of course, there are numerous uh, techniques and algorithms. As I mentioned, string matching approaches are the um, uh, 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 most um, popular. Uh, it's mo mostly because they are computationally viable in academic context uh, of massive courses, but also there are some more precise uh, approaches, but with uh, uh, pretty strong scaling in computational time, like parse trees and program dependency graphs. Um, I mentioned here uh, several string matching algorithms that are popular in this, this context. Uh, 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 those are greedy string tiling or, uh, string tiling or GST algorithm, then carp rubbing string matching, uh, winnowing uh, uh, algorithm for document um, uh, fingerprinting, and there are uh, many, uh, many more. So uh, we need to use some uh, source code detection systems. Uh, there are numerous of them reported in uh, the open li literature. Most of them are developed by the uh, academic community and there are not much uh, commercial uh, uh, solutions, if any at uh, all. There are several key features of such systems uh, that are important for plagiarism detection in source uh, code. Uh, those are supported programming languages or front ends of the uh, system or, or, or the tool, then extendability, uh, detection algorithms used, which are uh, uh, important in the context of uh, robustness and precision, then presentation of uh, results and user interfaces, security aspects, um, then exclusion of template code, uh, which is given by the uh, instructor or small files, and of course, comparison with history or external uh, resource, resources, which is a standard for the tools in uh, textual uh, uh, plagiarism. Um, uh, two, there are two uh, similarity detection, source code similarity detection systems that are uh, widely used. Uh, both came uh, uh, from the academia. One is measure of software similarity, or MOS, which comes from Stanford University, while the other is JPLEG from Karlsruhe Institute of uh, Technology. Uh, MOS is a web-based system uh, built around common line uh, scripts and a common line interface. It supports um, more than 23 different uh, programming languages. Uh, you, you can see some very popular, uh, such as uh, C, C++, Java, C Sharp, uh, Python. And it uses winnowing algorithm based on K, K grams and a fingerprinting printing, printing technique to uh, find uh, plagiarist uh, parts. Uh, however, uh, JPLAG is a standalone system. It's not a web-based system. Uh, it has both, uh, both uh, common line uh, interface and graphical user interface. Uh, from 2015, it's also open source, uh, but it supports uh, uh, a lot less uh, programming languages. Of course, it supports those uh, popular ones like Java, C Sharp, uh, C, C++, uh, Python, but also some newer uh, uh, ones. Uh, and it's based on the combination of Karp, Rabin, and uh, greedy string tiling algorithms. Uh, both have a pretty similar presentation of results in HTML, 
And uh, if we can somehow evaluate uh, them, which I did in one of my um, uh, journal papers, uh, we can say that MOS is more robust to changes uh, or those transformations that the student perform to hide plagiarism, while JPLAG is more precise um, in that uh, uh, context. Uh, of course, they have uh, some drawbacks. First of all, those are uh, academic efforts, even they are um, uh, vastly used in academia, still uh, they do not offer support, they do not offer comparison with history, nor they uh, search for internet uh, resources. They have more or less counterintuitive user interfa interfaces because in academia, uh, people uh, usually uh, do not focus on those uh, usability aspects uh, of the software uh, solution. Presentation of results is limited to the set of HTML uh, pages and they lack meaning meaningful uh, visualization, visualization of uh, resu results and also uh, uh, any kind of collab collaboration, analysis, grouping, and clustering, clustering of similar uh, uh, assignments. Also, those web-based solutions uh, also um, are not uh, reliable in kind in terms of processing uh, time and scalab scalability when uh, you feed them with uh, uh, hundreds of uh, assignments. Uh, so uh, for massive courses, it's also not um, reliable as, as a performance indi uh, indicator and it's a drawback of those um, uh, uh, systems. Um, in the end, uh, I would like to tell something about um, our efforts here at the School of uh, Electrical Engineering, University of Belgrade, to, uh, to fight source code uh, plagiarism detection. As I said, we have a lot of students. At the common freshman year, we have more than 700 uh, uh, newly, uh, freshly enrolled students together with ones uh, that did not pass their uh, exams from the uh, um, previous years. Uh, then uh, after the uh, first year, we have two big uh, uh, IT related uh, study programs, software engineering with 200 students and computer engineering and informatics with uh, uh, a bit more than uh, 100 students, 120 uh, students. And uh, plagia plagiarism is, mostly com is most commonly found in our programming courses. Of course, uh, uh, first, uh, it's found uh, on, in those course, uh, courses on the freshman year, like programming one, which is Python based, and programming two, which is uh, C, based, C based, then in object oriented programming uh, courses. And uh, we can say, uh, uh, as a conclusion, that uh, all those courses have smaller but rather frequent. Uh, homework assignments. Uh, we give those assignments to the students uh, more frequently during the semester. And uh, uh, if they don't have enough time or, or if they, they did not uh, study uh, enough, uh, they uh, some of them uh, uh, uses other solutions or those uh, uh, code mills or um, ask, ask, uh, 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 they ask other uh, people to write them their uh, uh, solutions. Of course, there is also a problem at the, uh, those uh, higher years. Uh, we identified problems on the, on, on, in three uh, uh, relatively, uh, relatively important uh, courses like operating systems uh, course, uh, compilers course, and web application programming uh, course. Uh, and they all have larger programming projects uh, in terms of both an, an effort students should put uh, uh, to uh, solve them, and both in the number of lines of code, uh, most of those projects are with more than 1,000 lines to 2,000 lines, and similar as they uh, uh, they need to write uh, a fully functional um, uh, application on the domain. Uh, so it is a problem. We try to fight it, and uh, uh, I mentioned the tools and ways how, how we try uh, to fight it. In the end, uh, I would like to emphasize uh, some uh, more points on uh, plagiarism investigation uh, phase. Uh, there are uh, much there. There is a, a pretty much room for improvement uh, of the tools and practices uh, in plagiarism in investigation, and by that I mean that uh, uh, 
both tools and the methodology uh, should be improved in order to improve uh, presentation and visualization of the re results. I had uh, some experiments uh, or research efforts on my own to use or construct model um, plagi plagiarism networks in the form of a graph, uh, uh, which should be undirected weighted uh, graph or weighted network. Uh, it is the approach which uh, is inspired by social networks or so social network analysis uh, methods. Uh, when we filter uh, all those students uh, with a uh, low level of all similarity, which is not uh, usually plagiarism, uh, we can see uh, uh, interesting uh, things in produced vis visualizations, but also in uh, uh, quantitative uh, uh, analysis, uh, such as those that you can see uh, on the uh, right. We can, we can see different collaboration platforms and uh, uh, we've been able, uh, we have been able to identify uh, using those social network net, uh, methods, uh, sev several typical uh, patterns of collaboration, uh, su uh, such as pairwise collaboration, but also a star-shaped collaboration when you have a, a central node, which is probably the source of plagiarism, or group type of plagiarism when several students usually collaborate together to write the one, one solution. Or we have those students who mix solutions, uh, parts of their uh, solution from different sources. Uh, so those new methods, uh, I think uh, it's my opinion, should be in incorporated in contemporary uh, uh, tools. Uh, to conclude uh, the presentation, uh, we all know that plagiarism is a serious threat to the regularity of examination process, both in textual documents and source code. There are different aspects that we have to take into account uh, uh, when we fight this malpractice. Our country, our perspective is that uh, we are not exception to the rest of the world. We need improvements in the tools uh, to detect plagiarism in our uh, language, uh, languages. We also fight uh, uh, this in uh, source uh, source uh, code. And uh, I would uh, once again would like to emphasize the importance of the software tools in their future uh, development. They need to be improved both uh, in, uh, in visualization and presentation or results aspect. And then uh, I think they should uh, include more contextual information about students, uh, even uh, maybe some information from the real social uh, networks and uh, also uh, student administration, which can give, which can give some context uh, on the uh, uh, that uh, plagiarism in investigation process, pro uh, process. And I think that uh, there is a room uh, of improvement uh, by using machine learning and artificial uh, intelligence uh, techniques in order to improve simil similarity detection process, but also uh, uh, the, the, the following steps that I mentioned um, before in order to have uh, the whole decision systems or de decision support systems uh, uh, as uh, to be more punctual. Uh, that's all on my uh, side. Uh, side. Uh, again, I'm very glad. Uh, uh, I was very glad to uh, give this presentation uh, to you uh, today, and I would be uh, very happy uh, to answer all the questions. Mark, спасибо за доклад. Uh, uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation. It was very interesting and very inspiring. We have several questions. I will ask them now. Konstantin Kiselyov. задает следующий вопрос. Для защиты диссертации нужно иметь много публикаций. Dissertation. You have to have a lot of publications. Nowadays, both the papers and the articles are published online. And uh, it can happen that, that the paper can uh, have 80% of similarity with articles. How do you work with that? Uh, what is the percentage of the originality? Uh, of the dissertation uh, as compared to the articles that preceded it. 
Uh, thank you for, for your question. It's an interesting uh, topic uh, because it's re related to the uh, hardest thing in, uh, uh, in the life of a PhD student. Uh, the hardest thing is to write uh, uh, his or her uh, uh, thesis. Um, uh, of course, uh, there, are, uh, there are numerous sources uh, today on the internet and the articles are published in index dat databases uh, and can be found uh, uh, using different uh, tools. Uh, still, I would argue that uh, you can have 80% uh, uh, similarity uh, of your own work with those on the internet because uh, typically PhD thesis, at least here in Serbia, should be a much broader, uh, should have a much broader scope, uh, scope and should uh, 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 cover a much broader um, uh, uh, topics from the field of your uh, PhD res uh, 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 re re research. I think the only way to have a, a, a 80 percent percentage of uh, similarity is to translate or incorporate all those documents into uh, uh, your own uh, PhD uh, thesis uh, without proper, uh, without rephrasing or without uh, um, additional uh, 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 processing or without adding a, uh, any other uh, text. I would say, as uh, uh, other uh, speakers also noted uh, uh, today, uh, that the key is in a proper uh, citation or proper referencing, referencing on the used um, documents. I think uh, uh, the speaker before, uh, Mr. Brusilovsky, he, uh, he gave us uh, a lot of uh, advices on how uh, to or how not uh, to, uh, to perform in, in this uh, uh, context. Uh, so uh, I, would, uh, I would say that uh, you need uh, to um, uh, prepare enough literature to select them and to properly cite them in order to uh, uh, avoid uh, those kind of uh, uh, similarities. Спасибо. От Григория Здановича. Интересные примеры. Thank you for your interesting examples in the beginning. Работах названных вами людей было plagiarism in the work of the people that you quoted in the beginning. Was it detected by the software or by the commission or by people? скажем так, без well, программных инструментов. Uh, okay, I, I understand the, the question. I mentioned uh, several notable cases of plagiarism, and uh, of course, uh, each case was inspected uh, uh, specifically uh, with the, its own uh, uh, its own policies. Uh, so uh, uh, most of them are inspected by the tools, but then researchers researchers did uh, thorough uh, manual inspection of those documents. Uh, it was also the case, uh, because I'm uh, uh, pr pretty well uh, informed about the case of uh, our uh, Minister of Finance that I mentioned in the beginning, Sinisha Mali, and uh, he, uh, his uh, PhD was uh, checked uh, both uh, with, um, uh, uh, with a tool, then the tool revealed uh, uh, some similarities, and then uh, there were several scholars. One of them was uh, uh, our uh, compatriot, but who uh, works in Germany, Rasha Karapanja, uh, who did additional research. And he uh, uh, discovered even more plagiarist uh, parts. Uh, some of them uh, were simply translated uh, from other documents from English to Serbian. Uh, so. Um, in those cases, I think both uh, um, automatic work did by, uh, done by, uh, by the tools and manual inspection uh, did, uh, done by, uh, by the, uh, uh, of course, uh, um, important individuals in the field uh, is done uh, to confirm the cases of plagiarism. You, you need them both uh, because um, uh, some um, uh, uh, some concepts are especially in text plagiarism are paraphrased and then you have the you have uh, to to have a good uh, understanding of the field 
in order to say, okay, this part of text is definitely plagiarized, maybe from different sources, but uh, they are not uh, properly cited. Okay. Uh, yes, the можно вопрос от меня. A question from myself, if I may. You told us about the uh, original source plagiarism. And, uh, what kind of code repositories do you compare uh, the code to when you check? Uh, so, uh, uh, the most important thing uh, to to say in the, in, in that context that. Uh, um, uh, Lecturers, uh, professors are usually uh, uh, more or less uh, um, by them all, all alone uh, by themselves because they rely on their own uh, repositories or maybe institutional repositories. Uh, mo most of those tools, I think all of them that I mentioned, they do not check against the sources on the internet, uh, like uh, uh, such as in the case of, uh, for, for example, anti-plagiat uh, uh, and uh, its modules or uh, it authenticated its uh, uh, internet search um, modules. So uh, here at my school, most of the professors, they have their own databases. Um, in some contexts, uh, it does not matter uh, to um, check with history, uh, because um, in several courses, uh, we just uh, um, uh, write new, uh, new topics for homeworks or projects uh, for new generations. And uh, so we don't, don't have to, uh, to check uh, their code uh, against the codes from the past but only by uh, fr from the colleagues um, uh, from the colleagues uh, that also submitted the, 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 the solution at uh, that particular uh, uh, moment of time. But in some contexts, uh, there are, uh, for example, data structures, algorithms that are very well known. And you have uh, a lot of those repositories uh, on the internet, for example, Stack Overflow, Geeks for Geeks, uh, Rosetta Code, uh, also numerous others code repositories, GitHub uh, to, to, uh, to, to uh, mention the most popular ones, which are not easy to search or scrape. Uh, and for that reason, uh, we don't have the accuracy probably um, as uh, uh, at its bestest or uh, the, the, the similar, similarity scores or the uh, accuracy of similarity detection is not, um, not uh, totally precise. So we need improvements of, of, of tools in order also to include uh, those uh, sources from the internet. One more question to say, uh, two questions to finish up. The first is from Alexandra Galkina. In the 80s and in the 90s, in Russia, there was a state program of evaluating software. So they analyzed the source code of the programs. If it was 70% different from its analogs, it was considered to be original. Do you have any such percentage which is enough to be original? Uh, well, I cannot uh, say that because uh, uh, we don't have uh, regulations uh, on our own in that, uh, in that sense. Uh, when we speak about the computer programs, which are not programming assignments, we uh, speak about uh, copyright uh, infringements or patent uh, uh, rights. And uh, uh, usually, uh, in those cases, which are uh, usually put uh, in court uh, or some other uh, committee or similar, um, they usually hire experts uh, to write uh, uh, reports uh, on the software clone uh, uh, de detection. And then from case to case, uh, they uh, 
put uh, their decisions uh, if something uh, uh, constitutes plagiarism or uh, or not. So there is not a certain percentage for myself. Uh, if uh, something is um, uh, similar in uh, those uh, uh, homework assignments, uh, more than 20%, I personally check it manually. So it's in, uh, uh, in those tools, when you compare student, uh, student codes, uh, when the tool says that uh, similarity is more than uh, uh, 50 or 60%, it's an obvious case of plagiarism. But uh, uh, in uh, uh, most cases, students do not plagiarize this whole solution. Although there are some of them who uh, take uh, uh, um, solutions from their colleagues and then almost without modification, they submit uh, it as their own. But most of them, they plagiarize, for example, one function, one part, two functions, one class, depending on the, of course, on the programming um, language uh, uh, used, and then you need to check uh, manually all those who uh, who, ha who have, uh, uh, for me, at least twenty percent or more uh, of the uh, of the similarity. Thank you. And the last question. Our listeners wanted to ask you to share articles. If that's okay, please send them to the conference organizers and we will share your articles with our audience. Uh, yes, I, I, I would be glad to send uh, my articles on source code plagiarism detection. Uh, I will try to uh, compile the uh, set of articles in, in English. Some of them are in, in, in Serbian, so probably it's, they are not uh, applicable. but I will, uh, I will try to find those in English and uh, I will send to the organizer, organizers. I will gladly do it. And uh, once again, uh, thank you for this conference, for, for organizing this conference. Uh, I was really glad to participate. Thank you very much. Well, maybe you could also send uh, the articles in Serbian to for some of our audience members that could be of benefit too. Thank you very much, Marco.